Engage. The is awful. Hello everyone! Welcome to another uh, Rancor's Brothel actual play, I guess. We're doing some role-playing, uh, and today it's gonna be... Uh, hope you're not looking forward to D&D, because that's not what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I have sitting across from me, Jeff. How's it going, Jeff? Oh, it's good. Good, good, good. We are running uh, a monophobia for Call of Cthulhu. Um, we've already done uh, one... Uh, out of of the monophobias, uh, we did that vengeance from beyond. You can go back. That was in, I believe, December of last year. It's been about six months since yeah. we did a monophobia, um, and that was what sort of kicked off our whole D and D stuff. But the D and D group couldn't meet tonight, so it's just me and Jeff. We're gonna, in the, you know, ever growing dark and gloom, we're gonna play a scary <laughs> game. Uh, so Jeff, would you like to fill us in? Do you have any experience with Call of Cthulhu or the uh, Lovecraft mythos? Very little. Uh, I've recently started listening to to actual plays of Trail of Cthulhu and Call of Cthulhu. Uh, you actually gave me a copy of Trail of, Cth of Cthulhu to start reading through, and hopefully, I'll run a game eventually. But nice, be nice. Yeah. Beyond that, that's about it. I must say, I uh, I intentionally uh, so I'll I'll give a brief synopsis. But uh, anyone who's really interested, uh, if you really want to hear the monophobia is in order, not that it matters, I would go back and listen to Vengeance from Beyond because I do a little bit more about how the game is played. But Call of Cthulhu is a role playing game from Chaosium. It uses uh, basic role play, so you hear Jeff uh, rolling percentage numbers, and he's trying to get under a target range on his character sheet. Um, what else did we say? Uh, monophobia. It's a book it's a pdf for free you can get offline from unboundpublishing.com i believe and the idea is that you just have this one-on-one -on -one horror game with the player and the keeper uh, the guy running <laughs> the game and i must say this i've read them all all three of them are good this is the best one. Oh yeah this is the one that i this is the one i wanted to run with matt but it even gives a warning in the beginning about Make sure you have a player who can think laterally, because this, if I do this right, should throw you for a loop, and I should get a lot of confused looks across the table. What do you mean, think laterally? Well, we'll see. I'll just... <laughs> okay. We're going to throw you in, and we're going to see what you can figure out. Okay. Um, so before we get started, uh, just a brief synopsis of who you're playing so everybody knows uh, you know, who you are and kind of what your story is. You don't have to go through all of the skill sets, but just a general gloss over. I am playing Josephine Samwage. This is a pre-gen character for this game. Uh, she was a she's a she was born into privilege, uh, but she's not the typical dilettante. She went to nursing school, uh, met a doctor there, fell in love, and followed him to Africa for an adventure. Uh, got tricked into a bad expedition by a guy who was looking for a, a lost city and an artifact and got ditched by got ditched when people started dying in the party uh the remaining members of the party chased him across the world and her lover eventually died uh sacrificed himself at, during a summoning to save everybody else and stop the horror and now she is trying to live her life afterwards and not not coping well, apparently. Yeah, the Cthulhu mythos will do that to you. Yeah. <laughs> you see some, see some horrible <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so I guess I should also mention, uh, I mean, Jeff could see it because it's on his character sheet and he's already read it, but we are playing a uh, traditional Call of Cthulhu, so that's the 1920s. Uh, you've come back to the United States after your trip to Africa, and you are living in Arkham, Massachusetts, because that's where Lovecraft <laughs> sets everything, and it, things are just more fun in Arkham. They really are. <laughs> um, and this monophobia, like I said, is the second one, and it is titled Of Grave Concern. Okay. Uh, so I guess, do you have any questions, Jeff? Are you good to get started? I'm good to get started. All right, we'll see what happens. This should be fun. Okay, uh, so you open your eyes, and you realize that all your movement is constricted. You, you're, you're laying down but confined, and everything feels very soft and comfortable. Can I see? Yes. But not far, maybe six, eight inches in front of your face. Okay. Um, can find all around me, legs, arms, everything? Yeah, as you start to kind of tilt your head to the left and tilt your head to the right, you, you feel like you're in a box, maybe? A comfortable box the size of a body. A comfortable box the size of a body. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, does the lid move? <laughs> uh, uh, so you reach up and... You push, um, and you feel some give, but you don't... It, it takes a minute. It takes you longer than you would think to lift, but it does move. Um, like it, like it's really heavy, or I'm, not, or I'm weak? Give me an idea roll. We'll go ahead and get you some practice here. We're going to see which dice... Jeff has a large assortment, so we'll see how the dice are rolling for him so far. Uh, not that well. Actually, 74 out of 75. Oh, there you go. Pass your first roll. There you go. Uh, you feel... It, it's not that it's heavy. You feel weak. You feel a little windy. You feel a little tired. It, 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 something's weird. Okay. Um, but you're able to slide the lid off, and um, you can now see a stone ceiling above you. Okay. Um, I'll sit up and look around. Um you suddenly realize that you have uh, come awake inside a crypt. The room is approximately 40 by 20. Um, You realize that you're sort of isolated on one end of the crypt. And um, as you look, you know, sort of, you know, it's it's kind of the traditional one long hallway. um, And you can see sort of to the left and to the right uh, shadowed shelves. And then there appears to be a little bit of just just the faintest bit of light on the far end from you. Shadowed shelves containing... Uh, it's shadowed. You, you'd have to get a little bit closer. Okay. Um, I'll, I Apparently I am in a coffin. I will get out of the coffin. All right. Um, as you get out, you, f- you realize that everything's kind of... You, you, you're stiff. You're, you're wooden... You, you tend to lack connection with sensation. Um, okay, I'm checking myself out. All right, let's go ahead and make one of those sweet sand <laughs> rolls, Jeff. Okay, what do I roll? Uh, you are rolling a you're rolling the, your D100 Persistent. versus your sand score. My actual. Yes. Okay. So 61 for you. Uh, 45. All right. Uh, you lose three. So go ahead and mark out 61, 60, and 59. Okay. As you look down, you realize that you are that your body is male. <laughs> um, and I always wondered what one of those was like. <laughs> not only do you realize that you're male, but you realize that um, uh, your flesh is dry and flaky. You can see remnants of bone sticking through bits of your body, and that you are, in fact, a walking, shambling, desiccated corpse. Okay. (laughs) Um, Why don't we call it Cthulhu, Jeff? Yeah! Um, Any odd desires for, like, brains or anything? Uh, No. You realize that, um, you realize that you feel no need to eat or drink, to scratch, to rub your eyes, you realize after a second that you're not even blinking. And we'll take Just another sand it, check for that. Uh, made it. Oh, what? You failed that one. Yeah, I it, did. Damn. 
Um, so for a failure on that one, you're going to lose two. Okay. Um, As you realize, are, are the eyes there? <laughs> yes. They're not. As best as you can tell, touching them with, you know, bone and, you know, <laughs> gross sinew. They I don't really rubbery. feel from the fingers anyway. Yes. Okay. So, as far as you can tell. Okay. Um, well, sh**. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to start trying to figure out where the hell I am. And is... is Looking around, is there anything that marks out like family or anything like that? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, since since you got up and now have realized this horror of being a corpse, um, you sort of look to your left and right, and what you see in these sort of dark shelves, you can see, you know, they're kind of slid back, and you can see, uh, you know, coffins laying in. So you were sort of at the head, you know, the far end of the tomb, and there. Uh, let me look again. I think there are twelve. We'll go with that for now. There are twelve coffins. Six on each side. Okay. Um, you see no markings of any kind. Um, nothing on the edge of the shelf saying who would be in those coffins. Okay. Um, I don't have any recollection of my family having anything like this, do I? No. In fact, the last thing... <coughs> you, you realize that your your head hurts quite a bit. You, you feel a little... It, it, it goes beyond the, the fuzzy feeling woodenness of being a corpse. Like, you feel... I don't want to describe it. You, you, like your head spinning. Like, you know, when you, if you, you wake up and you're still drunk, you know what I mean? Everything's still spinning and it's something's okay. wrong. It's hard to focus. Um, and the last thing you really remember is going to the grocery store. Okay. Can I, how much about it do I remember? Do I remember what grocery store I was at, where it, where it is and everything like that? Vaguely, you remember that uh, you, you just remembered that you got a deal on fruit. You remember it's the one closest to your house. Okay. But you get that sense that that was not recent, maybe. Could be. Okay. Um, so am I d- disoriented to the point that I can't figure out, that I can't really examine the surroundings or? No, you, you realize that though, though your movements are stiff and you kind of shuffle, you can definitely move around, and you can you can examine things. Uh, just for fun, give me an idea roll. Okay. Five. You realize um, that there's no source of light in here. Yeah, you mentioned that I, I, I only see one little pinpoint of light. Right, but you're also having no problem seeing inside this tomb. Oh. So we'll take a nice little sand check for that one, too. <laughs> Made it. 33. Right. Uh, you lose none for that. Oh, good. Um, but yes, you realize you also apparently can see perfectly well in the dark. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I can't really go outside like this. <laughs> um, They're um, coming for you, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm going to start looking around in the crypt, see if there's anything that I can learn, anything that I can do. Okay. As you start to shuffle around the crypt to begin an exploration, you realize that for the first time since you woke up, quote unquote, you're starting to, you're starting to really feel weird. You're starting to feel like this is the first sensation you've really felt. Like we said, you can't really feel anything. Yeah. You're numb. But this is migraine it's throbbing it's vertigo the room is starting to spin and you realize that your vision is going dark uh okay and before you can do anything else you black out (laughs) uh the look on jeff's face right now i love it uh i didn't even do anything (laughs) Welcome to Cthulhu. <laughs> um, and uh, suddenly uh, your eyes open and you're staring up at a ceiling. Uh, that, a different one? Yes, a different one. Okay. Uh, I'm checking myself out first thing. <laughs> um, the first thing you notice is that you are now Josephine. 
Okay. Um, you are incredibly dirty. And okay, so not still at the grocery store. <laughs> and you are wearing men's clothes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to remind you once once we get done with this, I'll have you go home and listen to uh, uh, Skype Cthulhu did did one of this, and the look on your face and the stunned silence is the exact same thing that the guy who played it is. This okay, is, this is it. you're fine. Good, you haven't missed anything yet. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'll look around. Where am I? You realize that you're on a floor of an office. Or a study, perhaps. You can notice you're laying very near a, uh, a desk. Um, you can see that it's uh, there are books scattered about the room, some some shelves, maybe an easy chair, a lamp, etc. Anything I recognize. Um, as you get to your feet, you realize that it's still... Your head is just pounding, and something feels wrong. You feel something... Like something's been lost. Uh, and actually, I'm going to mark off one of your magic points. So 17 down to 16. Okay. You To equate that in, in, in uh, game terms, you feel like... So magic is related to power, which is power, which is sort of like a, 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 a game mechanic for the soul. Like you yeah, feel... Something took a chunk of me. Yeah, not, you feel like something's missing. Something's not right. Something's very, very wrong. Okay. Um, so, let me see. Let me make sure I'm going to follow along here. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, you see, a, you see a large number of books, uh, a, a desk. Things are scattered everywhere. Um, you are in a study. The study seems vaguely familiar. You feel like you've been here before. Okay. It's not yours, but... <laughs> uh, listen, check. Sure. Okay. No, I don't hear you. <laughs> okay. You don't hear the crazy knife wielding <laughs> psycho behind you. Well, I'm worried about the guy who's going to come downstairs and with a shotgun wondering who's in his study. Um, okay. Uh, I'll... Am I disoriented and to the point that I can't act? No, you. Okay. I mean, you. You've got a throbbing headache, and it's very hard to concentrate. But you can. You can act as you will. Okay, uh, I'll check out the desk. Okay. Anything laying out? Uh, give me a spot hidden roll. Uh, spot hidden is forty two. Got it. Cool. Twenty eight. Thank you. Uh, you realize that there are uh, do do do. Um, you notice that. As you're looking around, books are scattered everywhere, including the desk. Uh, a lot of them are, like, flipped open, spines cracked, maybe some notes in them. Um, you notice that there's... But, a... Like the place has been tossed or chaotically mm, used? You would guess... I don't want to put this. Uh, you would guess that it's been used. Okay. It looks like things have been sort of dropped. You know what I mean? Like it, But you can see that there are bookmarks in places and stuff It just... There's no sense to what's going on with all of the books. Okay. Um, you see a telephone on the desk. Um, you, along uh, Alongside their, you know, kind of like you would do a short list of names and numbers and so forth. Um, you also notice that there is an odd reddish stain on the desk. <laughs> so books, reddish stain, and uh, a telephone. Okay. Um, <laughs> any pictures or anything on the desk? No. No? What are the books? Anything I recognize? Um, give me a... We'll call it... Uh, you realize that it's it's an eclectic mix of all kinds of things. Um, are you looking around the room or just on the desk? I'm looking at what's out and open. Okay. You realize that most of what is out and open are, uh, what do I want to call them? Um, history books. Any particular era or? Uh, it's no, it's not worth giving you an idea roll. Uh, give me an idea roll. Give me double your idea roll. So basically you just need to not roll three zeros. And you did not. Yeah. 
you realize that it's 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 various history and geography books and stuff like that. You realize that it's all modern history. Okay. So it's all stuff that's occurred probably in the last decade, two decades. So, I mean, we're 1920, 1920 blank, so past yeah. 20-ish years. Okay. Uh, oh, there's how, some filing cabinets in the room. I didn't mention that. Sorry. Okay. How uh, is that the stain? How fresh is that? It is dried, and I will take a medicine roll. Uh, no, sixty-three. What's your medicine score? Thirty-six. If I doubled it, you would have gotten it. I was okay. just saying, I was trying to decide. Right, you. It's 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 blood. Okay. It's a horror game. It's blood. Yeah. It's dried. It's old. Okay. But not real old. Okay. Uh, check the room. Don't touch anything. <laughs> I don't think... Fi- is fingerprinting a thing yet, 1920s? I have no idea. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it is. Not quite. Okay, but I'm not going to leave bloody fingerprints on anything. That's that, would be, that would be... Fairly Fair obvious. You realize, thinking about that, your hands are dirty. They're not covered in blood. Okay. You would say that it's... You look... You, you feel disheveled. You don't feel like you're soaked in blood, if that's what you're thinking. Okay, that's good. Um, As you look around the room, like I said, there's still a filing cabinet. Uh, glancing at the bookshelves, you realize that... Um, you realize that the bookshelves are sort of divided into two main categories, trains and the occult. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll check out the file cabinet. As you go through the file cabinet, you notice a number of different files on... Uh, it's all neatly arranged, bills, personal documents, and so forth. Um the name bills that you for, yeah bills for the name that all the bills and documents are in is Arthur Sackville, which you can go ahead and give me a, a no roll yeah. there. Yep. Uh, ten. Um, you uh, you know that Sackville is a um, Sackville is a retired Egyptologist. Um, he's well known for uh, dealing in um, dealing in uh, you know uh, import export antiquities type stuff in the Arkham area, and he, something else. It, your head hurts too much. There's there's more there. You're not okay. I'm sorry. I was writing. What was the last thing you said? Oh no, you're right. He's an Egyptologist. And he deals in antiquities. Oh okay. The, there's. You know more about him, but you're you're just so distracted by the migraine you you can't pick it out. Yeah, there's something else there. Okay. Um. Anything else in the room worth checking out? Um. You notice that uh, just giving the room another once over, you realize that uh, um, you have a cult. Yeah. Toss me an occult. Twenty. Nice. Which I'm assuming is a pass. Uh, yeah, f- uh, 54. Okay. Uh, you realize that the... Uh, I don't know if you personally know these occult books or not, but the occult books that are there are not like... He doesn't have a copy of the Necronomicon or anything. It's like uh, the Golden Bow or the Mysteries of Nostradamus. Like, it's it's intro-level type stuff. It's not real creepy mystery stuff. Okay. It's just like... The it's, Dime it's, Store Occult. Right, it's the beginner's guide <laughs> to becoming an occultist. Okay. Um, and I'll take an idea roll. 76 out of 75. All right. <laughs> Tough luck. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll move out of the study and check out the rest of the place, try and figure out where the hell I am. All right. As you open a, as you open the door, you open into you realize you're in uh, sort of your stereotypical like colonial type house. Okay. Um, as you open the door, you realize you've opened it into a long hallway. Um, you look to your right. You see four doors and some stairs going down. You know, sort of 
door on the left, door on the right, stairs, door on the left, door on the right. Yeah. You look back to your left, you see three doors, and then what is clearly the front door to this house. Okay. So you've got three doors on the left and four doors and stairs on the right. Oh, you said... <laughs> I'm sorry. Four, four doors to your right and three doors to your left. Which way is the stairs? The stairs are to your right. Okay, I'll start, I'll start to the right. Okay. So when you start to the right, you've got a door on your left, a door on your right, stairs, door on your left, door on your right. Okay, I'll go to the first one. The first door? Yeah. Uh, you open a door and you realize that it is a bathroom. Let me scroll the bathroom. Uh, you realize that, again, this is the 1920s, so it's stereotypical of early modern plumbing. Um, uh -huh. So you've got kind of the... The old tank of up in the air, you know, Thomas Crapper type toilet, and you've got a uh, bathtub. So nothing too out of the normal, except that you realize that there is a pile of blood-stained clothes in the bathtub. What kind of clothes? Women's clothes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, God, did I bury a body? <laughs> you don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> um... Okay, uh, shut that door and go to the next. Man, not even going to investigate the clothes, huh? I... <laughs> <laughs> Worried about them fingerprints. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Now, I'll, oh, oh, uh, maybe. I'll, maybe. I'll, I'll check out the clothes, see if there's anything in the pockets. Um, as you, Cody. <laughs> as you touch the clothes, sand roll. <laughs> I like making you lose sanity. Uh, 29. Uh, that's only a one point. Uh, you realize they are indeed your clothes. Yeah. And that that's the last thing you remember wearing. You put them on because you had an important meeting. You, you dressed up nicely to meet with somebody? This was after the grocery? You think so, yeah. Okay. Um... Is there a big towel or anything in the bathroom that I could find? Give me a luck roll. 56 out of 85. You want there to be a towel? Yeah. There's a towel. Okay. I'm going to bundle the clothes up in the towel. Okay. And All right. take them with me. Okay. And I'll rinse out the tub. Fair enough. Okay. Next room. Uh, so you want to do sort of across the way on your right? Yes. Okay. You open it up to find a neatly arranged uh, spare bedroom, you would assume. A uh, small bed, a uh, cup, like a one small, uh, what do I want to say here? One small dresser. Um, everything, you, you open the door, it's got that smell that you get when it hasn't been opened in a while. Okay. Um just out of curiosity, is my derringer on in the pocket of the clothes I'm wearing? That is a good question. I'm trying to think. I'm going to say no. No? Did no. I find it in the clothes in the bathroom? You did not. No. Oh, awesome. I will tell you, I've just mentally placed it in the location that I think is the most uh, likely, should you ever find it, and uh, it's not there. I had to think about that. That's a good point. No, it's not on the clothes. Okay. Well, gee, I'm glad I had that in my equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Cthulhu. We give you a tiny carrot, then beat you with a really huge stick. <laughs> okay. Um, there's not enough blood soaking through that big towel, is there? Uh, onto the floor? Is that what you're worried about? Yeah. No, the blood is, is dry -ish. Okay. All right. You do... Spot hidden. I doubt you it. You don't see it. 94 is way over your spot hidden. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about them in the clothes, which makes sense. Okay. Uh, I'll check out the bedroom. Um, you, you, there's, like, nothing there. It's like an unused guest room? Yeah. Okay. All right, I will close that door behind me and go to the one past the stairs. Okay, so the one past the stairs on the left or the right? There's one on the uh, left. The, the first right. one, whichever that is. Uh, the doors are equidistant, so it doesn't matter. 
I'll open both of them at the same time. No. <laughs> Super uh, Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. You open to find a, a room very similar to the one you just left. It looks like another small bedroom, single dresser. You know, uh, it ha- again has that musty smell yeah, of not no, being used. No signs of use. Nope. Okay. Uh, nothing in the small dressers. Uh, you search through again. Everything seems empty. Like maybe some night shirts and a spare towel. Uh, okay. Maybe some assorted junk underneath the bed, but nothing. Nothing of interest. All right, I'll check the other one on the left. You open a door into a much larger bedroom, uh, which is clearly the master. Um, you see that the room shows signs of extensive use. Um, there's piles of laundry everywhere. There's a large four-poster bed that's unmade, and um, the side table is covered with books on history and geography. Um, so it's it's a it's a much more used room. Okay. Recent use. All right. Um, I'll. I'm not going to go digging through everything, but I'll start checking out the room. You notice that um, a number of references, maybe on the inside of a suit or something, uh, maybe inside the books, you see that there are more signs of Arthur Saxville. Yeah. Um, and then you also find, uh, the only other thing that you find really weird is that uh, a, some set of uh, safari clothing and equipment tucked in a wardrobe. Oh, Recently used, or it doesn't appear to be okay. But sort of the you know the the khaki and tan shirt and pants and broad rimmed hat with yeah. mosquito netting and yeah, I'm sure I'd have some kind of flashback or something from that. <laughs> so does that mean you touch it or you don't touch it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll check it out. I guess it's clothing. Okay. Not Asshole. everything. Not everything <laughs> scares you. Alright. Um nothing really of use in here. Not um anything. I mean some books, uh some clothing. Anything like, interesting book wise? More recent history geography type stuff. Okay. All recent. Okay. Um I'm going to go down the stairs. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. <laughs> All right. So you're going to go down the stairs? Yeah. Is there a furnace or anything down here? Um, as you go down the stairs, uh, there it's a sort of the lo- you know how sometimes when you go into the basements, you've got the long staircase, you go down to a landing, and then it's a short turn to the right. Yeah. Um, let me find this here. Go to the right page. Okay. Um, as you go down, um, you realize that the, it's a large, mostly open space, um, illuminated by a single light bulb. And you, as you come down you sort of take a minute to to blink, to adjust your, your eyesight to the dimness. Oh, so Um, I am seeing regular again. Yeah, you assume so, yeah. Um, and as you get, a a, as you sort of get accustomed to the darkness, you can see a lot of other things, but the very first thing that you see is the body of a man lying in a pool of congealed blood. So we'll do a little sand check there for me. Nine. Nine. Uh, so you lose two. Um, as you look at the body, um, you suddenly flash back to, uh, six months ago, maybe a year um, you realize that you met this man. Um, he, you met him at a, at a, um, some sort of a conference or a lecture about, um, ancient Egypt. Okay. And you realize you spoke to him. It is Arthur Saxville laying there dead on the floor. And you realize that he, he stuck out to you because when you guys started talking about Africa and ancient Egypt, that he had this sort of same dead pale look when you both sort of hit on that, that, you know, dark subject. And it's clear at that meeting that Arthur Saxville has also encountered something, something. <laughs> much like you did in Africa. Okay. Um, do I know anything about him? Um, Does he live alone? <laughs> Family. 
Give me a give me a knowledge. Is that no? Yeah. Eighty-seven out of one hundred five. Um, you you seem to remember that he's a he's a confirmed bachelor. Okay. Um, but he is from the area, so you would assume that he has family, but uh, you don't know that f- for sure. Okay. Just want to make sure that somebody's not going to come home from the grocery or something. How how old? Uh, maybe a medicine spin to tell me how old that or how long that's been there. Uh, yes. Nope. 43 out of 36. Um, you could, uh, you don't think that it is, you don't think it's been there long. Like, it hasn't been, you would narrow it down to, you're not good enough on your forensics to pinpoint a time. Yeah. But you would say maybe a few days, probably less than a week, given the state of composition. Is there a forensics? No, medicine's okay. kind of forensics. Okay. Um, you could if you want. Uh, um, you realize, now that you've gotten close to the body, that um, Sackville had been stabbed multiple times. I clearly bled to death from that. Um, you could give me a first aid roll for some different info. I doubt it. <laughs> oh, 80 out, 80 out of 79. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, you can tell that he's 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 been uh, stabbed to death. I'll uh-huh. give you I'll give you one more medicine roll for something else. Oh, <laughs> you ready to swap out those dice yet? Yeah, just right. about. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Okay, is there a furnace down here? Um, it's the twenties. I'm assuming there'd be like a. I don't know an op- a, an open flame furnace. I'm trying to think. I don't. I'm going to say that there probably is some sort of furnace, but it's not the kind of furnace that you're thinking about. It's it's very very tiny. Okay. This is an older remodeled home that does have interior plumbing, and it does have some sort of... It may not even be a furnace. It might be a boiler. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else to check out down here? Um, you realize that uh, this is clearly a workspace. Um, what kind of work? Uh, you notice that there are a number of antiquities stored down here. Um, if you'd like, you can toss, uh, archaeology or history, whichever you prefer. Uh, I think I'll do history and fail it. (laughs) How about archaeology? Sure. Why not? (laughs) Say I never did anything nice. Yeah, I know. Um, still not low enough. See why Trail of Cthulhu made the changes that it did? Yeah, I do. Yeah, this is the only this only thing that's difficult about it. It's so simple, but anyway, as we uh, diverge, um, you you can tell that you can't tell much about the antiqui- antiquities, but you do you can tell that they've probably been recently ex- excavated. Uh, give me an idea roll as Jeff searches for more dice. <laughs> I've, got other, I've got other die here if you're feeling superstitious. An idea? Yeah. Uh, 55 out of 75. Okay. Um, you realize looking around that there are... You see other tools that you would expect, you know, shovels, uh, pry bars, stuff like that. And it begins to occur to you that they show signs of recent use. Recent use as in... Like the shovels are still covered with like fresh sod and stuff. (sighs) Okay. And uh, let's go with... uh, Your idea was a 55. You You would pinpoint these artifacts as being... They're definitely not Egyptian. Even with a bad roll, you know they're not Egyptian. You would think that they're probably... They're definitely more modern, and what do I say here? 
Um, give me a maybe a natural history or something. What other sciencey things have you got? Uh, natural history, anthropology. Anthropology would be a good one. Can you get that one? Uh, yes, fifteen out of forty-three. These are <laughs> American artifacts, maybe from probably from the last century. Oh, okay. Um, like anything, anything specific or just general things? Things like um, candelabras, maybe some jewelry, some trinkets. Okay. Nothing standing out as being any more interesting than any other. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Um, and it looks like the tools were used, like outside. Yes. Does it look like any of these artifacts came from outside? They look like they have spent some time... In... Give me a double your natural history roll. Um, 81 out of 114. Um, oh, wow, I didn't realize your natural history was that good. <laughs> um, you, these things have been weathered in not-so-good climate. These have been um, these have been exposed somewhat to the elements, not directly, but sort of to heat and cold, probably. So, like uh, you're getting you're getting patinas on things and stuff. They clearly yeah. haven't been cleaned and polished, but they weren't dug out of the ground because they're not rusted. If that makes sense. Yeah. So maybe in storage someplace that wasn't real secure. Give me an idea, roll. Not getting it. Um, 60 out of 75. Uh, you assume that these artifacts may have been stolen. Stolen. You just, it, it, you're seeing groups of sort of, you can't tie them directly together, but styles and stuff makes them seem like they're sets. Okay. And so it, it makes you wonder why you would have sets of old junk down here in the basement. Some of them, you know, showing signs of wear, maybe even having some dirt on them. Huh. Okay. Uh, man, I'm not connecting anything. That's all right. <laughs> you know, still, there's, there's still things. This is why you gotta, it's, it's thinking laterally. So I will feel, fill some dead air as you think. And like I said, there's no one to bounce ideas off of. So feel yeah. free to, Speak aloud. I'm sure there are listeners now who are going, clearly it's blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and there is still half a house to explore as well. Right. So far I found a bunch of books. Recent history. Uh, last 20 years or so. Um, I woke up in corpse. Mm -hmm. And then I woke, I lost time. When I woke up in my own body, somebody else was in it. Interesting. Somebody who's been a desiccated corpse. Interesting. Somebody is brushing up on history. Um, how did they know this guy? Um, do I know anything about... I know a little bit about the, about Saxville. Right. Do I know anything about his house? You, again, your head is swimming, but the house seems, no, the basement, no, but like the hallway. No, the, I mean, oh, like you talk about, history. Um, anything I might have talked to Saxville about. You don't recall anything? No. Just from, you have, You don't probably don't have architecture, do you? Uh, there isn't architecture. Mm, I'll just go ahead and say, just from generally looking at it, it's it's an old one-story colonial home. Yeah, it's an old home. It's not that old. It's old, but you got to remember we're in, we're in Massachusetts. I mean, it's not like 1700s old. It's, it's colonial style. Okay, it's how old did the crypt look like? Impossible to say. It was it was old, but it wasn't crumbling. It was still solid. Okay, I'm thinking that maybe whoever this was that I that I was in the 
whoever the corpse belonged to may have may have known this house maybe not known the guy i don't know um i think it would be impossible for you to tell because there's no way for you to date the okay. crypt you can date the house the house is probably maybe i don't know when colonial i don't i don't know if colonial style for house actually lines up with colonial times yes okay <laughs> but i'm going to assume that the house is the, the house is is old but it's not like I wouldn't imagine it's Founding Fathers old. I think colonialism is in, as a design comes later. Okay. But it could be wrong. I don't know either, so... <laughs> yeah, where's your architecture role? God. There's not architecture on the damn sheet. <laughs> might, that might be Call, call Cthulhu 6th or 7th edition. Um, it's a good thing you can't roll it because I can't tell you because I didn't look up <laughs> colonialism. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else I can check out down here in the basement? Um, well, you know what I'm going to say. No, I don't. You still check out the corpse. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll check out the corpse. Okay. Um, as you, as you pad the corpse down, you realize that, uh, like, like you've seen it, it had been stabbed. I am, I am avoiding the blood pool. Fair enough. Give me a, just for... <laughs> just for just to see if I fall in it. Yeah, exactly. Let's go with a. In this game, we kind of uh, pick a modifier and multiply it by something that makes sense. So let's just say a dex times five. It's a good basic check. Okay, sixty-five. I didn't fall in it. There you go. You're fifty-two. You, you're able to poke your way around the corpse, and you 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 end up. Give me an idea roll. Uh, 65 out of 75. All right. You realize as you are, as you're poking around the corpse, that all of the entry wounds, uh, would line up roughly with someone of your height. Yeah, I kind of gathered that. Yeah, that's a sand roll. 20. Two. As you realize, someone about your height did the, uh, stabby stabby. Uh, you fish out a wallet. Okay. As you're, you're feeling around inside the jacket pocket, maybe you find a wallet. Okay. I'll open it up and... Uh, inside you find a couple of dollars and change. Um, you find a license for Arthur Saxville. You find, um, a membership card to the Historical Society, the Arkham Historical Society. And you find inside the... You know, some wallets, I think this is an old-timey thing. Some of the wallets have, like, a change purse almost inside it. Yeah. As you feel around, you feel like there's something in there that's not change, and you fish out, fish out a small copper key. Okay. He's writing it on his inventory. He must be taking it with him. <laughs> yeah? All right. Just checking. All right. Um, check. I guess there's, a, there's an ID for Saxville. Yeah. And it's got an address. Yes. Can I figure out where I'm at? <laughs> you realize that this is an address you kind of know. Maybe you drove here. Um, but yes, you, you're, you're familiar enough with Arkham, you know that address. Okay. All right. Um, anything else I can fish out of the body? No. That, no. that seems to be the only thing that's on him. It's All just right. the wallet. I will... I'm also going to take the Historical Society thing. Okay. Yeah, the Arkham Historical Society. Oh, it's copper. I shouldn't have said. I shouldn't have said copper. It's a brass key. I don't know why I said copper. That makes no sense. <laughs> he would totally bend a copper <laughs> key if you put it in a lock. I just meant it's 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 not a house key. It's it's right. like one of those teeny tiny keys. Yeah. Okay. Do I remember anything in the bedroom or anything? That would have been locked? No. No? You haven't seen anything thus far that that key would go to. Okay. Um, I will gingerly replace the wallet. Okay. Are you taking the money? No. Oh, uh, okay. Not going to rob a dead man? No. <laughs> Just going to take his precious Historical Society membership card. <laughs> and the key, yes. Um, all right. 
Uh, anything else down here that I can check out? I mean, um, I mean, like I said, you could look at the tools. You could look at anything else. There's a workbench uh, where it looks like several of the the heirlooms, the artifacts, are in the process of being cleaned up, but nothing. I'll check out the tools. Um, Pickaxe, uh, crowbar, shovel, um, maybe, uh, oh, what do they call them? Because they didn't, they had flashlights, but they weren't flashlights in the 20s. They were like, they were almost like bullhorn lanterns. Um, huh. Um, I'm thinking of the, I'm thinking of the miners. Um, <laughs> he does not have a miners cap. Yeah. Just a sort of tool. Acetylene, that's what it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, they look like they've been recently used. Yeah, they've, they've, they've seen signs of... They're, they're well-worn. You know, you can see dirt caught in the in the edges of the shovel, and you can see... Like the, real fresh dirt, or...? Yeah, I mean, it, it, everything down here has the scent of... Fresh earth. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, something around here has been dug up. So what would you like to do next, Jeff? Uh, I guess I will go back upstairs. Okay. So when you go back upstairs, the only rooms you haven't been in are to your right. Yep. I'll go back that way and head to the first one I come to. Okay, so when you pass the bathroom and the study, there's two doors on your right and one door on your left. Two doors on the right. I'll go to the first one on the right. Okay. As you open that door, you open into a small uh, modern kitchen. Uh, the kitchen is an absolute disaster. Um, there are dishes, dirty dishes piled everywhere. Oh, okay. You can see, <laughs> not the kind of mess you were thinking, huh? No. You can see that uh, several cabinet doors are open, and from what you can see, the cupboards are empty or with very little food. Um, and you do notice, um, you do notice on the edge of the sink that there is a large carving knife. Yeah, of course there is. Yes, there is. Uh, still blood covered or clean? Um, you, as you get closer, it does seem to have a red sticky residue. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um... You can hold the dice. It's just a question of what you do next. Oh, no. I was waiting for a sand check. No, no, no. It's it, not, not yet. Okay. Not yet. There may be one, but not yet. Um, are there any visible fingerprints on it? Handprint or anything? Are you going to pick it up? No, I'm looking. <laughs> you can definitely see that there's a, a distinct wearing spot. Like, you can tell that... Whatever hand was wrapped around that blade. Like a void in the blood? Yes. But there's a void where that hand was. Yeah, that's about... I'll compare my hand to it. As you compare that hand to yours... Sure, you want to throw it? Go right ahead. Yeah, 23. You lose one point. Yeah. How are we doing over there? Are we into the 40s yet? Nope. I'm at 50. Ah, there we go. Um, That's the only check I'm consistently making. Um, that's not a bad check to, yeah. be, to be making, though. Know. Um, as, as you put your hand up to it, you, you suddenly have a, have a flashback. And as you, as you have a flashback, you remember you, you were standing with, with Sackville, and he looked completely mad. And he was chanting and screaming, and it was all around you, and you were just dizzy and nauseous. And then, um, and then he raised his hand. No, you raised your hand. He raised your hand. Um, and then everything went black. And now you, you, you have that same feeling again as if you and Saxville are the same person. Okay. Do I have any... Do I remember anything more about why I was meeting Sackville? No. No? You just have that... You just have that feeling of chanting and screaming and... <coughs> hand raising and something. So, so I'm getting... 
I'm getting confused about who was doing things because I'm seeing it from both perspectives. That can be your interpretation. Shit. That? <laughs> <laughs> you did, yeah, I mean that you raised your hand, he raised your hand, you raised what? It's all very confusing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I should also point out that there is a now that you're in the kitchen also I should say, so all the kitchen stuff is you came in the door, all the kitchen stuff is sort of to your right. There's a door in front of you, and then off to your left it opens into like a grand dining room uh, where there is also a huge mess of things. What kind of things? Uh, piles upon piles of paper. Okay. Um, I'll take a look at the paper. Any, okay. Any particular, is it, is there writing on it? Is it just? Yeah. I mean, we're talking, a, this is, this is sort of a formal dining room setting. So we're probably talking a, an eight foot, 10 foot table, you right. know, something that seats, Eight, ten people, and the entire surface is covered in papers. Um, documents rolled up, things shredded, things tossed about, things piled. Some's handwritten, some are typed. It's just a complete mess of stuff. I mean, it's it's as if uh, a number of books just exploded everywhere. It's there's no rhyme or reason to it. That you can tell whatsoever. So library use wouldn't get anything out of it? Uh, you could throw a library use if you like. Uh, 38 out of 67. That's pretty good. Um, at first glance, uh, you it would take you a while to reorder everything. You realize that with, with that throw, you could. There's enough piled there that you can figure stuff out. Um, what you do realize, though, is that most of these... Documents have to do with documenting cemeteries, specifically local ones. Um, really? Yeah. Um, I don't find anything about a crypt that sounds familiar, do I? You see dozens and dozens of documents about crypts. Varying crypts, different places, what have you. Okay. Anything that diagrams them that... Uh, do, I mean, dozens of things that diagram different, different places. Um, give me a, uh, um, give me an idea roll. Sixty nine out of seventy five. Um, you realize as you, you start to realize as you're kind of not really sorting these, but shuffling through them, that you're seeing a notation taken over and over, as if a lot of this paperwork leads back to a central point. Does that make sense? It's almost as if you can tell with your library use and your idea role that the documentation you see before you does have a connecting thread beyond uh, beyond just being information about cemeteries. Okay. You can, uh, and, and it seems to be, you'll see a note that says, you know, like such, such and such crypt or such and such grave and then you'll see a, a like a page number written out to the side. And you're starting to get the idea that somewhere there is a book or set of books or catalog from which whoever used this documentation is pulling all the resources from. There's some sort of central thing. Does that make sense? Kind of. Um, did I notice anything like that in the library or in the study? You didn't notice anything on cemeteries. Okay. Uh, if I spend a little bit of time reordering this, yeah. As you as you spend time reordering it, you're starting to get the idea. These are all local cemeteries. Um, they all seem to be referencing uh, again crypts, family history. There's Does a it look like genre. somebody looking for something, or yes, yes, yes? Okay. It looks like there there's been an attempt to correlate. I don't want to necessarily say aristocratic families, but well-to-do families with the locations of their crypts. And you begin to realize that there are a number of lo a number of notations for a book called A Century of Internment. Okay. Is that something I find here? No. No, of course not. Uh <laughs> you're, you're gathering that that is probably the central book that 
it somehow they're taking references from this book to extrapolate this data about crypts and locations. Um, okay, so where what is he pulling? What's what's the paperwork in front of me from? It's a lot of it's handwritten. I mean, a lot of it's okay. These are his notes coming out of the book. Yes. Sorry. Okay. I guess I did not make that clear. Yes. It's sorry. All, it's all handwritten. I thought this was stuff. a book that was torn apart. No, no, no. no. Okay. This is all handwritten diagrams. I mean, you're probably seeing not photocopies. Whatever you did in the 1920s, it's photocopies. You know of of plots and marks and see page 94, you know, 128. Okay. And right. give me double your idea roll. <laughs> Barely? <laughs> <laughs> Almost got that as three zeros, didn't you? Um, you get the idea between looking at this and what you saw downstairs that probably... You're not for sure, but you have the inclination that he may have been, been grave robbing. Right. Okay. It's not creepy. No, not at all. Ha, ha, ha.